Hi there, welcome back to the Dutch RC channel again. Thank you for watching. And um, I thought it was time to do a review of this High Sky HMX 280. Um, it was released about two months ago, I think, and it was quite highly anticipated, um, mostly because of its looks, I think. But uh, the real thing about this quadcopter is that you get a a real a hobby grade uh, quadcopter in well in, in the racing size somewhat it's a it's a little larger than uh, the 258 uh, racing quads of course but you get uh, approximately that size for around 150 euros which would be what 165 dollars i think um that's a good deal, I think. Uh, real brushless motors, uh, a, a real hobby grade uh, flight uh, controller, separate uh, flight uh, uh, motor controllers. They are in the arms, by the way, over here. Um, so that's a good deal. Um, however, well, uh, I'll get to uh, if it is actually a racing quad uh, in a minute. Uh, but let me first. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, let me first go over the transmitter that came with the ready to fly version. Uh, now I bought the ready to fly to be able to uh, test this transmitter. Um, I do have enough transmitters already, but uh, otherwise, if I, otherwise I wouldn't be able to test this for you. Um, um, I received actually a mode one transmitter while I uh, do fl fly mode 2 but that was reasonably easy to, to convert so if you find yourself uh, wanting to order this uh, quadcopter and only the mode 2 is available um, as you can see around each gimbal there are four screws and well if you take out those eight screws you can swap the two gimbals over and you do have to switch also switch over a few connectors in uh, the inside of the transmitter but uh, well that was about a 20 minute job so that's pretty simple um, the next thing about this transmitter is it had a a nasty ratchet on the throttle stick and as you can hear that's gone I uh, modified that uh, simply sanded off the, the teeth of the ratchet and now that's gone. Uh, now I, I actually do like this transmitter. The range is great. Um, I can fly the quad further than I can really see it. So for line of sight flying this transmitter is just fine. Um, I have not tried this a quadcopter uh, as an FPV platform. I'll, um, I'll go over that later on in the review why I didn't but uh, well for a line of sight this transmitter is just fine. All right back to the main attraction the quadcopter and if you have not seen this quadcopter before as you can see it has a nice design at least in my opinion, that's uh, up to anybody's taste of course. Uh, it has very nice lights, eyes in the front and on the arms, red in the back, white in the front and it has two LEDs here which also uh, act as uh, low voltage indicators. They start blinking a little too soon actually if you see them uh, blinking you can um, fly another three to four minutes actually but uh, well it's better to have that uh, too soon than too late I guess all right um, how is the build of this uh, quadcopter it is actually very good uh, the plastics used are very flexible on the legs mostly but even uh, I haven't crashed this quadcopter, but I can't see you breaking the arms uh, very quickly. Of course, it is possible, but the plastics used aren't of bad quality. So that that's a good thing, I think. 
Um, the next thing. Um, on the sales pages it is advertised as being able to fly 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah, sales talk, right? Um, it is quite fast and I actually um, had a, a GPS tracker on it and I was able to get it up to 96 kilometers an hour. 96. Um, I'll put the miles an hour uh, on screen now. Um, that is actually pretty fast. Not a hundred uh, kilometers an hour, but uh, pretty pretty fast. Uh, probably had a little bit of uh, uh, tailwind, but not not much. That I don't think that made a whole lot of difference uh, there. So uh, once again, it's pretty fast. Uh, the yaw rate is. Also pretty fast, but um, as if, if you are familiar with hobby grade quadcopters, you know that all those kinds of things are fully configurable. Once again, it has a CC 3D uh, flight controller, and with the um, Open Pilot, I think, uh, app, you can uh, fully uh, uh, alter any parameter of the, uh, of the quadcopter. Now. Um, about the lights, uh, is that uh, does that make this a good night flyer? Yes, actually. As you can see, the LEDs in the arm, uh, because of these lenses or caps, uh, can be seen from uh, below, up, left, right. Um, all the t you, you can all the time see at least three of these uh, leg, leg lights. And if you are looking from the back, uh, you can see actually four red lights and if you're watching the front uh, you can see at least these two white ones and these two blue. Uh, these blue ones uh, actually show up white at night. Uh, but um, more than enough uh, light to be able to fly it in uh, night time. And as you can see if you're flying towards you like this uh, you can well, uh, at least see four, the four leg lights at the end of the legs. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, well, let's see. Ah, yeah. Um, is this an FPV racer? Well, uh, obviously it doesn't come with FPV gear, but you'd also have to chop up the body to mount your FPV gear. So I don't see the point really. Why would you be buying a good looking quadcopter like this and then chop it up? Um, yeah, uh, you, maybe you could mount the FPV gear at the bottom. Um, I've actually uh, used this with just a bit of Velcro to do some aerial uh, videoing. Uh, that works out pretty well. But the angle wouldn't be nice for FPV flying. Um, I don't know. I don't, if you are into FPV racing, I don't think you'd be spending your money on this quadcopter. It's uh, mostly a fun flyer, and if you do want to do some aerial uh, footage shooting, you can uh, attach a camera. Actually, let me go into that a little further. Um, I have not seen a purpose-built gimbal for this one yet. Um, if you buy a brushless gimbal, those will be too tall for the landing gear. But it has mounting points for a gimbal over here, four screw holes. And um, here is a, a servo out to control your, light, uh, your gimbal. So the least you can do is make a homemade gimbal for the up uh, the, for the pitch um, you can uh, in the open pilot uh, configurator you can set this port up to your liking and uh, maybe do a three stage um, uh, gimbal setup so you can look forward or 45 degrees down and fully down something like that um, once again uh, i have not seen a purpose-built uh, gimbal for this yet that you can, but you can make something yourself, of course. Um, yeah, on the this side over here, 
uh, might be hard to see, but here is your USB port. Uh, There's uh, micro USB, so the same as you probably have on your phone, uh, with which you can uh, connect it uh, to your laptop and do your configuring. Um, as I said before, I have done a bit of aerial footage shooting with this quadcopter and I was actually surprised to see that it had uh, no um, jello at all. So somehow uh, if there are vibrations, uh, they don't translate into the, 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 the center of the frame. So that, that's a good thing. Um, okay, for whom would I suggest this quad? Is this is a beginner quadcopter? Um, it's a bit on the fast side actually, and with the brushless uh, motors, a bit powerful. Um, if you have uh, experience with a few toy grade quadcopters like, uh, for instance, an ominous uh, Dromeda or something in that uh, category, um, yes, th then you could uh, fully fly this quadcopter. If this would really be your first quadcopter, I just wouldn't. It's really on the f fast side for that. Uh, you can really be taken off guard by, uh, by its forward speed and uh, lose control of it uh, there. So, well, um, I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions about this uh, quadcopter, please hit me up a comment down below in the uh, YouTube uh, section and hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye.